Okay, so now we're gonna start our games. Um, we're gonna start, I'm gonna first do two in-person games and then I'll go into the virtual games because they will be different. Um, so first, a few tips to help make this process a little more fun for you. Um, the first time you teach a game, just mentally prepare yourself for it to not go smoothly or as planned. That's just part of it and it's totally okay. Um, the girls are learning and they're having fun and that's what matters. Second, um, I highly, highly recommend physically demonstrating at the same time you're verbally explaining. This way you're hitting two points of learning for the girls and also some of the games do require specific movements. So if they can see you do it as opposed to you just saying it, that's gonna help them so much more. Okay, so the next one, um, set your ground rules before you begin that first round. Whether it be no pushing, no running, um, no yelling, whatever you want that to be, just set those basic rules. Um, a few of the things we usually do, um, especially for this game that I'm gonna go into first, no pushing, no running. And if we see anyone being less than nice to each other, we're gonna have to call you out. And then the last one, always have a practice round. Always do that because inevitably, girls will be upset because they feel they didn't understand the game well enough. So it's always best to do a practice round, then they'll get the feel for it, and then you can play it for real. Okay, so this first game I'm gonna go over is called Land Ahoy. It's a really fun game and gets the girls up and moving. So how it works is you will need to designate an area for the girls to move around in because um, they're gonna be mingling. And the first thing I do is I tell the girls, okay, we're gonna play a game and it requires that you sing a song. So we're gonna practice real quick and I'll sing mingle, 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 and then have the girls repeat that. Now it's pretty simple. One time through usually does it. So that's the very beginning. And they'll be singing that while they walk around and mix in with each other. And then um, you as the leader or whoever's running the game, you're gonna be calling um, directions out. So the girls are gonna mingle and then you'll have one of six things you can say. The very first one is captain on deck. So as I said before, they'll be mingling and then you say captain on deck. And what the girls will need to do is drop to the floor. And so if they don't drop to the floor or they start to get into other poses, they're out. Okay, so that's the first one. The second one is Land Ahoy. So for Land Ahoy, there needs to be two girls per group. And so one girl will get on her hands and knees and then the other girl will need to stand there and we emphasize she gently puts her knee on the girl's back and salutes. Then for the third one, that's called lighthouse. So for this one, they will need three girls per group. And they will have two girls standing like this. So there's one girl in front of her making a little bridge. And then the third girl will get in the center and she has to kind of squat down and turn like a lighthouse. And she has to keep spinning until you're ready to move on. And now, um, I don't think I mentioned this, but in between each call, they go back to the mingle. Okay, so your fourth option is rowboat. Fourth option, four girls. They get in a straight line. They're all facing the same way and they have to row their boat. And it's important to emphasize that the rowing is a must. If you're not rowing, you're out. Okay, and last 
but not least, is family dinner. For this one, they will need five girls per group. They'll get in a circle and they have to eat their family dinner. Just like the rowboat, the eating is necessary because you eat at your family dinner, right? <laughs> so those are the six options. And when I'm explaining this game to the girls, as I did just now, I actually demonstrate with them. And sometimes the, the girls enjoy if you like grab one of them to help you out. I'll usually grab girls to help demonstrate the poses that they need to be in. And then after I go through all of those, then I usually quiz them and I'll say, okay, how many people need to be in rowboat? And they'll say four, or how many people are in captain on deck? One, just to make sure they fully understand there needs to be a certain number of girls in addition to the pose. So for our next game, this is called Chocolate River. Um, this one's really great for team building. Um, it requires the girls to work together. So normally I would have little poly spots, but um, I'm using what I have on hand. So we're gonna use paper plates today. Let me grab that real quick. And whether you have paper plates or poly spots, you just need some kind of um, spot marker. So when I was a Girl Scout, my mom always had carpet squares for us. So if you had something like that, you could easily use it as well. Now, um, the point of this game is there's a chocolate river flowing really fast and you have to get all of your friends, you and all of your friends across the river safely. Now, the only way to go across the river is by using your magic marshmallows. So with the magic marshmallows though, you have to keep in mind, this river is flowing really quickly. So if you lose contact with your marshmallows, they're gonna float away. And for this game, I usually like to set clear boundaries for the ends of the river. It just kind of helps the girls see, so like, We'll have cones, but you could really use anything that'll be visual for the girls so they know where to go. So the girls will be in a line. You'll start with your first girl and hand her a stack of marshmallows. Now, I usually start the girls off with one marshmallow per girl, um, but as they progress and they get better and they get the hang of this game, I like to give them fewer and fewer marshmallows. So then it becomes more challenging. So your um, first girl will walk up and this happens almost every time. She'll throw her marshmallow down and it's, oh, nope, you lost your marshmallow. It went down the river. So that's already one down. <laughs> Then they'll figure out they need to maintain contact. They'll remember that. And so usually you'll see them like doing this or whatever it may be and that's fine. So once your first girl gets onto her marshmallows, now again, if you lose contact with marshmallows, they float away. So what happens, I see this time and time again too, First girl gets out and then just keeps walking. She keeps putting her marshmallows down and forgets that everyone else needs to be behind her. So then what you do throughout the game, I just kind of stand by and watch. I try not to give too much verbal direction and I want them, I want to give them the opportunity to work together and to figure out how they're gonna get across. So when that happens, I just come over again kick the marshmallow away, you lost it, it floated away. And so she'll be standing here and then she can give another marshmallow to the girl behind her and set it back down. So then that way they have that down. And then next time she'll remember, I need to check for my friend's foot. Okay, my friend's foot is there, I can move on. Like I said, this game's really great for team building. It encourages them to work together and you gotta keep reminding them, don't forget your friends.